Hi, this is Pastor Ken from Vineyard of Hope in Osawatomie, Kansas. My prayer for you today is that God would touch your heart in a real and tangible way for a breakthrough in your life as you hear this message. Thank you for watching, and I want to give you a personal invitation to come and see what we're all about. The church information is at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoy this message. God bless. And when we can learn that when we give, it's a gift to be a giver, just as much as it is to receive, man, things change. We don't demand something because, and, and I was talking to somebody, was it you, Nick? I was talking to in my office. I was talking to somebody about the fact that if we lived in a world where people would just quit thinking about everything they get, and they always thought about, man, what can I give? What can I give? What can I give? Every need would be met because everybody would be so dead set on giving the gift, giving a gift that nobody would go without. Imagine a whole body that came in here and all they were worried about is making sure everybody got what they needed and giving them what they needed and blessing them with what they needed. Anybody that came in here with something uh, of a need or a need of some sort, it would be met because everybody would be looking for that. But that's not how we live. That's not how it works. So I'm going to read this and I hope I, I, hope I, I, I hope I put the Christ back in Christian, not Christ back in Christmas. Oops. I wrote this. I said, put Christ back in Christian, not Christmas. Today I'm going to echo something that, 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 that I've heard and witnessed this week. And you may hear some similarities on Sunday as we tackle a sermon called The Gift of Giving. But here we go. Man, it was beautiful today. Just beautiful. Here we go. I have been thinking about Matthew seven twelve all day, all week. Whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Now I just want to ask you a question. How many of you know somebody, and maybe even your own reflection, you know yourself, that you keep, you keep expecting people to give you stuff, but you never give, never give. Oh, pastor, be there for me. Pray for me. Hey, pastor, come to the hospital. But we don't know how you're going to forget because we never give. I, I mean, I'm mean, being real, right? Whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you. So to, how many of you guys have, have expected people to give, give, give out of the abundance of their heart, yet you give nothing? at all or you know somebody that just doesn't give it all or maybe you give every once in a while but it's not enough Matthew seven twelve. whatsoever you would that men should do to you do you even so to them it's a powerful verse and it's a verse that I live by and I hope that we get better at I'm not perfect at it none of you are but my hope is that the more we think about what we want we would offer the measure by which you give is the measure by which you will receive the Bible is very clear about that and so if we begin to think in a manner of how much can I give we'll never be consumed with what I'm going to get and it's a season that we have to be aware of this because God is calling people to be givers of their time, their talent, their resources, more than receivers. This church in the new year is going to have to, have to transition from consumerism to servanthood. I have been thinking about it. And it's powerful, especially in a season like Christmas. A season by its very nature that is about God giving us his son. Think about Christmas. I know it's Easter and all that. No, Christmas is when he was born and given. God came down and became flesh. God among us, Emmanuel, God with us, happened on Christmas Day. And it may not be the right time and, and chronologically being, you know, we might celebrate it on a different day. I don't want to get into all that crap. Just the simple meaning of Christmas is God gave his son. And so... <laughs> A season that is by its very nature about God giving us his son is a special season, yet also a season that by the natural course of things has, has gone from representing giving to representing many whose greedy eyes can't, just can't see past getting. What are we going to get? What are my kids going to get? What can I get? What can I get for my kids? I know those are natural responses and natural wants because we want our kids to be happy. But what if we were worried about teaching our kids to give rather than get? The need would be met. You guys got to go with me on this. <laughs> look, 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 look what he's getting. Look, it's a scene. This is what it's turned. They're getting something that's better than what I'm getting. How come the pastor gets them something and doesn't get me lunch? Or do, blah, blah, blah. We see the season like this is where many will uh, begin to donate and donate all kinds of things to Goodwills and everything else because it is the season to give, yet all year long they forget that giving should be a lifestyle, not a once-a-year event. So they give to the Goodwills and they give to the things and they give to the good causes like, like what we're doing with this family. 
because it's the season to do this, but never faithfully give or support the church that has fed them all year long. These are not easy things to say from up here. I want you to know that. But they're true. And if our church wants to get to a different level this coming year, we've got to stop being consumers and be more about giving. Like, it's got to become such a passionate part of our, our nature here. And some of them, can I just say some of us have? Let's celebrate you. Some of you have. You are, uh, listen, I, I know you don't do any of this. Nikki, you and your husband are some of the most supernatural givers I've ever met in my life. And you don't do it to be recognized, but I've never seen people give like you and your husband. There have been times in the last couple of years that it blows my mind. I'm like, what in the, where's this? But it's the word of God. And imagine, and I know that's a gift for certain people, not everybody has that gift, but imagine if that was all of our want, was to give so that we could receive to give, to receive to give, to receive to give. That's how God does this. He blesses us to be a blessing, to bless us to be a blessing. And it's this crazy cycle of love that just just flows. And I don't understand it. I don't know the Bible's math, and, and I don't want to. I just want to keep getting it. Somebody asked me the other day, well, 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 how can you even afford to do that this day and age? And I said, how can I afford not to when I've seen God work? I just can't afford not to. So I wrote this. I said, it's, it's the, problem, the problem with this today with, with people that, that do it once a year instead of a lifetime is it brings a lack of balance and keeps God's children immature like infants. Like infants as they learn to live hypocrisy all year long and faithfulness once in a while. And God has called us to take care of our home before anything else. Did you know that the enemy's tactic is to make us a bunch of hypocrites? Here's the definition of get. Get ready. Come to have or hold something. Receive. Acquire. Obtain. Gain. Earn. Come into. Take possession of. By being given. To buy. To purchase. Secure. Gather. Collect. Grab. Bag. Score. That's to get, right? I receive. It's like, I got your letter. I received your letter. I received your gift. I received your compliment because it was given. That what is what get means. It, it means to succeed in attaining, achieving, or experiencing, to obtain. Now, here's what give is. Freely transfer the possession of something or someone to hand over. Freely transfer the possession of it. That means there's no attachment. I do it because he said so. Not because he's going to bless me. I know that's a fact because it's his word, but that is not the motive behind my giving. So I freely transfer the possession of something because God said so. It's crazy. Synonyms. Supply, provide, furnish with. I love definition. You guys ever do this word crazy search stuff? Man, I love it because when you begin to see what the real words look like in Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic and, and just English, you pull out the Webster's Dictionary and look at this stuff, you're blown away that it means so much more than just that simple thing that you've always thought it was. So to give is to offer, to award, to grant, to bestow upon, hmm, cause or allow someone or something to have something especially Abstract. Provide or supply with. I like that one. You gave me such a fright. That, that's it. You know, you give somebody something. It's not just a physical thing. What if you gave them hope? What do you think we're doing with this family? It's easy to do for a stranger. Why is it so hard to do for your own family of God? Cause or allow. Now, I'm just speaking some true convictions because... Uh, can I just say they're for me too? Have I become a consumer with everything that I am? Have you? Because see, if that's the, if that's the choices that we're making right now, we're not going to grow spiritually, emotionally. We'll find ourselves becoming complacent, wondering why our worship did not usher in the presence of God like Sunday morning. Y'all, y'all didn't recognize that, did you? Maybe you did. I left heartbroken Sunday. 
And I did that because it just felt like we were giving a worship that was not coming from a sincere heart. And that broke my heart. No wonder it was hard to deliver a message about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with power and authority. We weren't in the presence of God where that power and authority would make a difference in anybody's heart. Maybe I perceive something wrong, but I tell you what, God is calling us to become givers with everything we are. This is what it says to allow, to provide, to supply, permit, grant. So when we give, we're granting, we're permitting. I love that. So what does the Bible say about giving? It says, given you will receive. Watch this. Don't and you won't. It says, the same measure that you give, you will receive. And when it's talking about measure, it's literally talking about like, like what we could refer to as a measuring cup, a tablespoon to a, a teaspoon to a tablespoon to a, you know, it's talking about that kind of measurement. So if I give a dollar, I'll receive a dollar and some. If I give in an abundance out of a place of true sacrifice, God will bless that past just a simple blessing and into an abundance. God's blessings do not come because those are the motives in our heart. His blessings come because our motives are to be obedient. Go ahead. Somebody that has some kind of, because I know everybody here knows the word of God like inside out, right? What does the Bible say? You give me a scripture right now without cheating. What does the Bible say about giving to you? I want you to study that and see if that's really talking about blessings. We could we could apply that. Many people do. Many people do. And and but in the in the full context of things, is that talking about? I just I'm challenging you now. <laughs> but we've used that one. I've even used that one when it refers to that. He does want to bless us with, with things in abundance to the point of pressed down, shaking together, and running over. However, in context, that's, that's not... I want you to go there and look at it. You're going to shock yourself. You're going to go, oh my gosh! Anybody else? Tell me what the Bible says. Mm, that's good. That's good. Blessed are those who for they shall be comforted. Ah! <laughs> so we go back to the original law of the first fruits. Right? How many of you guys have seen that through the Bible? At the very beginning, before it was even talking about tithes, there was a law of first fruits. You reap what you sow, and if you give the first, you gain. You gain. You give nothing. You give the leftovers. It was for nothing. I have a lot of people that, that tell me that they can't afford to tithe, or they're not ready for it, or it's not time. And uh, I just want to encourage you. I'm going to ask you a question. You've said this for years. When is it ever going to change for you? Because nothing in your life has changed since you've never changed. And then for those who have taken the challenge, I want to ask you, are you telling the other people about the miracles that have happened in your life? Because it's still no good to be blessed and not share it with the world. The Bible says they will know you by the testimony, <laughs> by the word of God and the testimony from your mouths. So I'm asking, you know, what are we doing to lift each other up? Because sometimes I think we've forgotten that giving should be a lifestyle of every believer and we give of our time, our talent, our resources because that's all we have to work with in a life that is this big compared to eternity. And what we're so concerned with preserving in this moment right now will never take with us. That's why I don't care if I give it all away because you know what? I can't take it with me. And people fight tooth and nail tooth and nail to just not do what God says to do when they could just be blessed by doing it. I'll never understand that, but I too have learned the hard way most of my life. So I'm not going to try to understand it, but I'm going to challenge you. What if we all went into the season just dying to give, seeking to give more than we're worried about receiving and getting? What if we all made it a lifestyle? Like, I tell you what, no person would leave this church without receiving what God had for them. We wouldn't buck when leadership talks about it just because it's uncomfortable. We would dive in. I'm not going to make friends talking about some of this to end the year, but I'm going to tell you what. I don't need you to be my friend. I need to be your pastor sometimes. And if he's going to put me in uncomfortable positions where I have to change, my goodness, you better believe I'm going to put you in uncomfortable positions so that you get the fullness of God in your life. 
we're coming up on the Christmas season, and in this church, the history is nobody gives tithes. Nobody tithes faithfully. Everybody gives up. Not everybody. A great, a greater portion decide that, that instead of being faithful to God, they're going to do what they got to do and let God have the leftovers at the end of the year. And I just want to challenge you, why? Why? Don't do it. Just because you're leaving doesn't mean you need to do that because God's going to be with you wherever you go. Not assuming that you will or insinuating. I just want you to know. It's one of those things that people have that attitude. And, and I know, you know, I'm just saying it's a great analogy in this moment. <laughs> but, you know, the reason, the reason it happens, and we've done this, and I would like to see the cycle broken in Jesus' name. You know, I'd like to see some of you free from this bondage of debt by the end of the year because you decided to do it differently rather than carry into the new year the same poverty mentality that you left this year with. Pretty deep, isn't it? Pretty deep. God has something special for this church. And, and, and again, if it's uncomfortable and you have any issues with, with what I'm saying, I welcome sitting down and talking with you about it. I do because I think that that's how we grow. I'm not afraid of confrontation. But I am afraid of getting in front of Jesus and having to answer for why I didn't tell you the truth when we had the chance. That scares the living snot out of me. You know? Me and Nick had a really hard conversation in my office yesterday, I think it was. And, you know, we stripped it down and and uh, it was a hard conversation and he looked at me and he said a few things and I looked at him and I didn't let him say those few things and get away with them and, and then he looked at me and goes, you're right. And you know, the truth is, Nick, I didn't want to be right. I didn't want to be right. I just want you to hear yourself. Hear yourself say, there's something that I could be better at right now. And you did. We all could. But we can't pass off. We can't pass off what we're supposed to do in obedience to God by blaming our mate or anybody else around. We do what God says first. Y'all think I'm crazy. If my wife told me I couldn't tithe, I would tithe anyway. Why? I'm the man at home. Spiritual leader of my house. You better believe I'm going to do what God tells me to do before her. Will it cause a fight? I could say at one time it may have, and in some of your lives it probably will. But you know what? Do you want to be right in your eyes, in the eyes of your wife or God? It's up to you. It's a fight worth having. Confrontation doesn't break us, it grows us up. And let me tell you something, the people that fight with you for being faithful and doing what God says eventually respect you because you had some kind of a backbone. See, I'm kidding. Try it for a little while, you men who aren't letting, you, aren't doing it. If you start doing it and your wife, is, it, she'll follow, or some of your wives, if you start doing it, I'm telling you, eventually they will come around and go, oh my gosh, there's something different going on in your life. The evidence is speaking for itself. I'm going to respect that. It happens every time. Okay, I'm done that one. I was talking to my presbyter about this yesterday, and it was kind of cool. He gave me a question, and I'll leave it with this. I said, I said giving should be a lifestyle uh, of believing, uh, a lifestyle of Christianity. This is how we put Christ back in Christian, is we, we give again. Not Christ back in Christmas, back in Christian. We give, we give, we love, we care, we give of our time. To, and even give, we even stop giving to the wrong people and give to the right people. Because if you keep giving to the wrong people, and the right people aren't getting it, then what are they doing? They, they become entitled. Anyway, I said, uh, I, I don't say put Christ back in Christmas anymore. I say put Christ back in Christian and watch Creed die. And this is the question I want to ask you as you're thinking about, should I give or should I get? Should I change how I'm thinking about giving and getting? Um, ask yourself this question. All you parents, who's got, parent, who's got kids, right? I'm going to ask you this question. Would you prefer your son and daughter be in a relationship with a person who is a giver or a taker? I've seen a lot of takers in my life. And I can tell you right now, I wouldn't want any of you as my friends to be with a person that was all about consumerism and taking. I really hope that some of you are getting what I'm saying. When we talk on Sunday, when we preach on Sunday, we're going to remember that there's a gift, and that gift is giving. It changes the giver.
It changes a person like you've never thought before when you become faithful to giving. Giving is a gift that, that, that transforms a mindset and changes a heart, that heals wounds. Giving, have you ever given something to people that cursed you? It changes your life. Giving is a way to live. And it is a gift. And if we can get that in our head, we'll stop, we'll stop fighting God's way and start doing it the way he says to. I want to challenge you guys because I, I, I really believe that in this season, it's going to be easy for people to get wrapped up in Christmas and forget Christ and, and wrapped up in getting and forget that it's all about giving. And, and this was the warning. This is just the warning for Wednesday night and a little sit-down devotional to say, whatsoever you would that men should do to you, whatever you want men to do to you, whatever you want other people to treat you like, whatever you want from those around you, you have to give back in abundance to them. That's the golden rule. And it applies to every season of our life, not just Christmas. Can you accept that tonight? Good. We're going to practice then. Let's, uh, let's pray. Would you stand? Mm. The Bible says, Give, and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, run over. That's, that's true. Uh, it says, uh, The measure in which you give is the measure you will receive. It says, uh, It says over and over and over, Why do you rob me? And you say, how am I robbing you? Well, you're robbing me the tithe and offering. Do me. Do me. Bring your tithe into the house so there will be enough food in my house. And, and people just think that that's all Old Testament. Uh, then you go to where Jesus says, hey, hey, hey. And they said, what do we do about tithe? And he says, you should tithe. Yes, the words of Jesus. But he says, don't forget even the more important things like loving and caring and giving and sharing and grace and mercy. And we could get crazy with this if we wanted to. But my point is, if you're going to think about a season where you've been given the greatest gift of all, and that is Jesus Christ, then why not continue to think about how I can resemble that gift, Jesus Christ, and watch God change you. Some of you are just worried about what we're going to do for Christmas for our kids and for everything else. What are we going to get? And let me tell you, some of you kids don't make it, some of your kids don't make it easy. Because they're all about, what am I going to get? And I understand that. And this is when we teach a little bit of a different lesson to them. What if we start teaching them to give and watch God bless them? Y'all think, you, know, you can't bless them more than God could. You can try, but it won't work. You're going to pass up ten times the blessing because you decided to, to do it yourself. Watch, some of you this year are going to listen to what I just said, and you're going to, maybe next year. <laughs> Go for it. I think that next year we're going to be growing up a little bit, Pastor Brenda. This year was a little tougher, but I think that we're growing. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you make us givers. That every part of us would begin to ache, God, for nothing more than to be in obedience to your word. Lord, I know we are not perfect, but I pray that you continue to cultivate a heart that does not worry, but truly believes in your will. Give us a heart that, that puts fear in its place compared to your word and your truth that your word would ring true and that the blessings would come because we're doing this as obedient unto you. I pray, God, that you would bless this congregation in their giving and in their hearts to do what you've called them to do in obedience to you. I pray that you bless them not just monetarily, God, not just physically, but spiritually pour out your glory. Begin to take them to a new level, a new place of understanding of, of what you would have for their will. God, I pray for those who continue to act the part but not live the life. I pray that you squash their ideologies that tell them that they have more time, their thoughts that tell them that complacency is okay. You're, I pray, God, that you, t you just get in there where they say, I'm going to throw a 10 every once in a while in there and stir them up to actually get obedient and quit playing games with you. Because we, God, we are coming to a season where, where you're putting the end on a sentence, the explanation point on the end of a sentence, and you're telling us to move on. Lord, I don't want anybody left behind. We want to move on with a foundation that's firm so that your glory would be poured out in new and special ways coming into 2019. So I pray that this would resonate with every one of us and that as we go into the end of the year, we would do it giving every part of ourself away to you for more of you. God, less of us and more of you. That's how we want to end the year. I pray this becomes true and that people would take this seriously in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.